All right. Um, call the order. We'll have the introduction of uh, hearing of guests. And speaking of that, let's go over here. Go right ahead. Yeah. I mean, just introduce yourself. We'll come back and get you. Okay. My name is Guest Howell. Maria Gillette with Guest Trimble. Tony Harris. Kimberly Blevin. Shannon Deniston. Tonight we've got uh, Shelly Williams with us. He's our our attorney. All right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and your other parties here now, right? This is Tom Morris. I'm gonna let you go. Go ahead, Tom Morris. You'll do your okay. presentation. All right. Uh, as I said, my name is Gist Howell. I'm a member of the Main Street Church of Christ. Uh, we uh, have been in that location since about 1959 or 1960. And since that time, the library and the church have had a mutually good relationship. Uh, we've traded some parcels of land. Uh, they have given us an easement or a right of way. Uh, they've helped with snow removal, a ceiling of blacktop, uh, some landscaping, some repair. So it's been a good relationship. And uh, this is kind of just our introduction to, to about the fact that we know that you are going to be moving and the property I'm assuming will be, I, I don't know how it's going to be sold. I don't know what the procedure is, whether it's sealed bid, or auction, whatever, you may not even have gotten that far with the process. But we, as members of the Main Street Church, are primarily interested, of course, in who the new tenants will be if we did not buy the property. We are interested, and I noted that when the building was built or the property was bought, there were three parcels that were bought. There were two on Locust Street and one on Main Street next to Cass Cook. And uh, in order to get an entrance from Main Street and also from Locust Street. Well, we used both of those entrances as well. In fact, the library gave us a, a right of way to use this one in the back from, from Locust Street. What we would be interested in is for you all to go about the procedure, thinking about the possibility of when you do sell the property, if we cannot buy the whole property, if possibly it could be parceled out and we would have an option to buy the Main Street portion of the library's property. We will be significantly lacking in parking spaces uh, if all of the land goes to one bidder. We are a growing congregation. We use more than our allotment of parking lots, and some of you will have a map. Uh, and th they're available to look at how the land is parceled out and we divided it up. We have about maybe 18 parking spaces. I'm not sure how many the church has, but uh, we, are, we, are, we would be severely limited in that case, and we are just asking for you all to consider the possibilities if and when the property does sell, if there might be an option to divide it and we would have a chance to either bid on or some way purchase the main street part of this particular property. Um, probably a few other things. Um, so what, what would that be on, on this map? Because I was, I was thinking, looking at the map, you were going to ask for something else. Well, there's several different maps. Uh, there's a lot of legal, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of deeds, there's a lot of uh, conveyances, there's a lot of writing about easements so somebody like Shelley or somebody would have to go look at the uh, details and just see uh, what the possibilities might be but do you all have a plan for selling the building and the property yet or is that we, something the state has to do or the li from library we, commission we haven't gotten that far in, okay in the well I'm sure it's but on the, on the map what would you be interested in just uh, well, on the, the part there next to Kez Lane across from the church. You're talking about this building. here, which is the entrance. Yes, yes Main the Main Street. Street. Yes, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's right. We have, we've traded, like you can see, parcels. Uh, this would be of interest to us. Okay. 
we we uh, we would have to be careful because um, the property was acquired with taxpayer dollars. So we've got to keep in mind that we need to protect and get the most money we can. Right, out of I understand got. that. Now so the other point I'd like to make is is this this true way from uh, Main Street to Lotus. Uh, it has become more and more of a problem through the years as far as activities after the library closes and, and we're not in services. Uh, you can go check with the police records and check with a lot of other people. There are a lot of tenants around here. There are a lot of people that you know border the library property. And, and if it were to continue to be a through area, I think that, that that's kind of a concern to us too, to maybe to whoever the new tenant might be if somebody buys this building. But uh, it's uh, not a city street. It's not maintained by the city. It's uh, Robert's Library does 99% of the maintenance. They let keep the rent. But that's just something to be aware of in the future. And, and that's all I have is if you have more questions. Anybody got any questions? How much you offer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that's what a, that's what a property is worth. Whatever you're willing to give, I'm willing to take. I, mean, I don't need building. I was curious though. What I don't know. Nobody, it hasn't been appraised for knows. several years, other than for insurance appraisal. The insurance appraisal is, you know, fairly significant, but that includes pictures, yeah. showing books, everything else. Well, out of curiosity, what was the insurance appraisal? Um, it's about a million. But I don't think we can get that. <laughs> well, and like I said, that's that includes the books and all the furniture and the pictures. Right. Uh, it's oh, 8,700 square foot. That's the word in there. Uh, and if you got $100 square foot, that'd be $870,000. But I'm not sure we'd get $870,000 either. But, all right. Um, Anybody over here got anything they want to say? We'll go on with the meeting. I just want to speak about on the, on the tax situation. Okay. okay. Um, were you all planning on having a second reading tonight? That would and we we've said it very well. We're going to have our hearing tomorrow, and okay. then we'll vote after the hearing. Okay. So tomorrow tomorrow's is a uh, that's an input hearing, right? tax hearing. That's where you solicit the public's input on the tax rate, whether the public wants it or not. Is that correct? Public hearing. Yeah. You're afraid to get it. Public hearing. Okay. And that, it's supposed to be held prior to the first reading of the tax rates, correct? I'm not sure where we're coming up with the first hearing and the second hearing. Okay. There's a, whenever you set a tax rate that exceeds the compensating rate, there must be two, two hearings, a first reading and a second reading. Um, if you choose compensating, you don't, you don't have to do the uh, second reading but where you're choosing a rate that exceeds compensating there must be a first reading uh, must be a second reading and prior to either reading there must be a public tax hearing to solicit the public's input um, the first reading that you all held was held illegally uh, for two reasons the first reason was there wasn't a quorum that simply means there wasn't enough board members to officially hold the meeting um, the second reason that meeting was illegal and, and is being reheld is because um, it was not properly advertised to taxpayers and the public in the newspaper um, this second reading, or, or rather the public tax hearing that you've got uh, with this advertisement in the newspaper, um, is also an incorrect advertisement. Uh, there are several different guidelines that that ad must meet. Um, if you look at KRS 132.023, and I'll be more than happy to leave this for your counsel to have a copy. Um, it's, okay, thank you. It says a statement to the effect, this is uh, one, KRS 132.023. Section 2, and that's going to be 2B8. And it says a statement to the effect that the General Assembly has required publication of the advertisement and the information contained therein. Um, neither advertisement makes any mention to the uh, General Assembly other than in the first line. Um, but, it, but at the bottom of the ad, if you look at the other taxing districts, there's a specific sentence of verbiage that is supposed to be in the advertisement and that was omitted. Um, the other thing is that this tax hearing 
Um, it also violates KRS 132.023, Section 2B6, um, where it states a time and place for the public hearing which shall be held not less than seven days, nor more than 10 days after the date that the second advertisement is published. So the meeting is actually going to be held six days um, after the date of the second advertisement, which therefore makes that meeting illegal on a second count. Um, there's also a, uh, an option in here, KRS 132.023, section 2C, that says uh, in place of the two published notices, a single notice containing the required information may be sent by first class mail to each person owning real property in a special purpose governmental entity addressed to the property owner at his residence or principal place of business as shown on the current year property tax roll. So it's my understanding that since you're unable to fulfill the six uh, requirement of the uh, not less than seven days, that you must hereby mail a copy um, be a first class mail to each and every taxpayer in the county. Um, the other thing is that the uh, the first reading was not pub properly published. Um, it's my understanding that it was uh, during a special meeting. Um, however, anytime a tax rate uh, reading is going to be read where the tax rate is set above compensating, it must be advertised in the leading uh, newspaper. So it was not um, properly advertised for the first reading. But the, I guess the main thing here is, you know, I understand there's been some change on the board. Maybe board members aren't clear with, you know, how the law works in regards to open meetings and when these meetings are supposed to be held. But the main point here is that the input hearing is to be held prior to any reading of the tax rates in order to give the public time to come and comment for or against the tax proposal. Um, so we would hereby ask that you have a new tax hearing, uh, maybe go ahead and cancel the one tomorrow or show up and dismiss it and then have another one. Um, I guess the, a month later, um, and in the meantime, uh, you know, promote it <coughs> through the newspaper, and then after that special tax hearing, then do the first and the second reading of the rates. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Denson. Does anybody else got anything? Thank you. I think we should have a moratorium on any raises in the tax rate until all these questions can be cleared up and all the legalities be put in the right places, then have a, uh, a thorough audit of the property and its, and its all its contents and the value of it, and then have a, a plan that says, if we do get a tax rate, if we do build another library, what's gonna happen to this library? I mean, Gift has shown an interest for his church to have it. Uh, you know, if you fail to plan, your plan's gonna fail. You always got to start with the end in mind. That's just simple business. So you got to know what you're wanting to achieve, then how you're going to achieve it, and what the steps going to be. So just to throw money at it and say, "Well, handle it as we go," is not good sound business practice at all. So I would ask a moratorium be placed on this to do all the, the sound business planning. What plan would you like to see? I mean, what are you discussing? Well, we just got a plan now from gifts to buy part of the property. Have you had any plan to sell property? Have you, you know, you said you had an appraisement for the taxes, but you haven't had a, a real estate appraisement. You don't know what the building and its assets are worth only through the insurance. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't appraised for the insurance, first of all. It's just what they um, suggest that you have coverage on. So it wasn't appraised at all. Then. But, but that, that, I don't know. I don't know where you're going yeah, because I yeah. So I mean, the ability is what it is. Yeah. Um, so it should be checked out. So the hospital wasn't checked out thoroughly, or it wasn't planned well because you had to demolish it. Well, we talked about that. Yeah, last, the last meeting. meeting it wasn't your fault that the building. Yeah, was it's not down. your fault. It, not it, it happens, but there wasn't a sound plan in there to say. If something happens to this building, are we going to be liable? All right. Thank you, Mr. Barnard. We're going to we're going to move on. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Anybody else got any concerns? <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead with our meeting. Uh, review the minutes. I read over. 
2013. I make a motion to accept the minutes. We have two. We have two, right? Yeah. You were thinking about the regular? Yeah, we're going to August 10th and August 31st. That's not that day, August 10th. Alright. So we got a motion and a second? Yes. Alright. For August the 10th. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. And we'll do the August 31st meeting. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. All right, we'll move along to communications correspondence and directed notes. Um, and most of the thing that I have noteworthy, um, the only thing is the broadband consortium for the state. We have to sign a um, letter of agreement to participate with the consortium um, and what that does is the school systems have already been in the process of if they file for e-rate someone at the state does that for all the school systems of the group consortium and KDLA has now um, got everything in place that they are going to do that for all the libraries um, e-rate is a refund in the amount of money that you spend for internet um, right now we have free internet for, from um, Adelphia Cable Time Warner um, and once we go to the new building, we may or may not be able to, because that law that put it in place is no longer in existence. So we probably will have to go with the rate. Um, but anyway, the state is doing a consortium so that they will file for everybody if you're interested in doing that. Um, to be able to do that, we need a resolution so that I can sign the paperwork for that as it comes through. So. First, you'll find out if we get the um, Well, the thing is, is to be a part of the consortium, we have to be signed on by September 28th because that falls into the whole federal year, you know, federal year starts <coughs> October 1. So that doesn't mean that we are going to actually do the e rate. That doesn't mean we're going to file. That just means when they apply to the federal government, they're saying all these people are part of this consortium. And oh, that's just okay. saying that we are. Okay. That doesn't mean we're obligated to do it. Okay. Yeah, yes. I think it's worded there in yeah. the hand that yeah. we go. Let me make a motion that I move that the Montgomery County Public Library Board of Trustees approve the E-Rate Consortium Letter of Agency as prepared by the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives and authorize the library director to sign the letter on behalf of the board. I'm going to need that back. <laughs> you remember that? I'll second the motion, though. Do you want to copy the letter? Yeah, that would help. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? So moved. That's all I have. you have. All right, we'll move along to the librarian's report. See, the, book, the bookmobile is being displayed there. Um, she is. She's out and about all over. And as they go back into school, you know, preschool has actually just started. It probably has a little bit to do with the circulation in there. Mm -hmm. She picked up a new night. Um, she's doing Tuesday nights and Thursday nights, both now, in community stops, um, public housing, several subdivisions. What do you think is the, the reason for the big dip in Camargo? Um, Same thing? Is, probably, because everybody's been you know, tied up. That's, you're looking at all this numbers. Checkouts are way up there with online books and audios. Mm -hmm. so please um, accept the library and report. I'll second. Okay, we got a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? 
So moved. We'll uh, view the bank statement activity. Verify all the checks are properly signed. Yes. I don't know if I'm getting old, but I can barely read some of these. I know, I'm fighting. I think you just need glasses. I know. I've done all I can. But see the coolies still waiting for him. That would be cool. I don't think it matters where it's at. signature of mine looks a lot like my signature. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there any question about it? No, I'm not sure. Explain to me the salaries, you know, how they're calculated on here. It looks like it's up, is that? Um, it just depends on what's going on. Yeah, how the paper is full. Because so sometimes some there'll be three checks in a month. Right. Some months three. I hate when that happens. <laughs> yeah, that happens too. Um, is there, was there any other contracts? Any contracts, proceeds, or incentives? We already got it. We already got it, okay. Got the general ledger there that shows all the persons. That Sam's Club was just the membership, right? Mm -hmm. And the quill. That's how much it was. Stone Long Care, that's the same company with the Google one. Greg, Sarah, 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 whichever one. Greg. Greg, yeah. <laughs> Looks better. They work, they spent one whole weekend. I didn't see anything else out of the ordinary. That's what I said. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Accept the general ledger. Right. Get a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Then we got the credit card activity.
Jim Dollar Tree on there. I went up there the other day. Amazing what's good in there for a buck. <laughs> Walked out with 16 items. What's the thoroughbred? How much did it cost you? Oh, vacuum repair. $16. Oh, really? <laughs> Get from are they um, qualified or not felon? You know, that kind of thing. I wouldn't take so long. 
for me to be qualified. So when will be David's last board meeting? response to uh, Mr. Denniston's comments about our meeting tomorrow. I'll read you it. I haven't seen the game. Okay. I'll read you it. Okay. Also, I would like to mention there is uh, possible litigation being discussed too if, if they don't redo the meeting. Well, that's a surprise. Come yeah, <laughs> can't believe that. Yeah. You want us to save money and you keep suing us, so we're spending money yeah. defending it. Just that follow the law. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so just so follow the law. Constitution stuff, right? That's right. But well, we have law. Yeah, well, I yeah. make a motion to approve the adjournment. Second. 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 Second.